start with, we're going to talk about the general background of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. I think every patient needs to understand that hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a disease that is compatible with a good quality of life and a near normal lifespan. I think this disease is underdiagnosed and overly feared because most people don't realize how well everyone with the disease is doing. About one in 500 people has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy across all nations. In the United States, that means approximately 500,000 people have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, most who may never know it. It is a genetic predisposition to the heart muscle being too thick. The genetics of it work such that if you have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, each of your children has a 50-50 chance of inheriting that from you. So we do recommend family screening uh, either by one of two methods. The first is genetic testing or by a lifelong echo surveillance program where we take pictures of the heart. We'll talk about each of these options in detail when you are here as they will both be available to you. I also want to talk about lifestyle. There is no specific diet that treats or manages hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Rather, the diet that you should be eating is that which takes care of the rest of your health. So it's the same recommendations for the rest of us. You need to make sure you're managing the rest of your diseases to the best of your ability. That means if you have diabetes, lung disease, sleep apnea, or anything else, they need to be managed to their best ability so that they do not impact your hypertrophic cardiomyopathy care. Exercise is an important discussion that we will have while you are here. You may be aware that we recommend that competitive athletes stop competing if they're diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. But that does not extend to regular exercise. I hope that all of my patients can live a full life that includes regular, low to moderate intensity exercise. I don't think that you should participate in high intensity exercise, heavy weightlifting, or extreme exposures but exercising like the rest of us are supposed to on a regular basis is going to make you a healthier, happier person. Another big consideration or fear that many patients bring is they've read about sudden cardiac death as a potential issue with patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It is true that this happens more frequently in patients with HCM than in the general population, but the risk is only about 1% per year. That means if we round up HCM patients that we know that by the end of the year, one out of 100 of those patients will have experienced a sudden cardiac arrest. This occurs when the heart muscle becomes irritable and the heart rhythm becomes chaotic in a way that does not pump enough blood. This is unpredictable, hence the word sudden, and it is preventable in some patients with implantable cardiac devices called a defibrillator. As part of your evaluation, you will undergo a series of assessments or risk factor assessments to determine whether your risk is higher or lower than usual for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients. Those risk factors include if the thickness of your heart is greater than 30 millimeters, if you've had a family member who's died suddenly from this disease, if you've had fainting episodes that we can't explain by simple mechanisms. We will look at your electrocardiogram both at rest at exercise and over a 24-hour period to see if you're having heart rhythm abnormalities that you are not feeling that we need to be aware of. And finally, we will have an exercise test that looks at how your heart rate and blood pressure respond, which also helps inform this decision. Once we have that information, we'll sit down with you and talk about what we think is best for you in a discussion that you participate in actively. In terms of other treatments, we'll discuss those next. All of the treatments in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are designed to relieve symptoms. So we need to understand why patients have symptoms in order to pick the right therapies. The typical mechanisms for symptoms in patients with HCM involve the thickness of the heart muscle. The heart muscle squeezes well, but sometimes it doesn't relax well enough to fill for the next heartbeat. The body compensates for this by having the blood pressure within the veins and arteries be a little bit higher. Sometimes that causes patients to feel short of breath. The major cause of symptoms, and the one that you've perhaps read the most about, is a phenomenon called left ventricular outflow tract obstruction, sometimes called the gradient. This is a phenomenon that occurs because the very top part of the main squeezing chamber of the heart, the left ventricle, is thickened 
in a way that it blocks the pathway that blood takes to leave the heart through the aortic valve. As the heart starts to contract, this pathway gets narrower and narrower. For some patients, this causes symptoms when they exert themselves, such as lightheadedness, shortness of breath, or chest pressure. The severity of that obstruction varies from minute to minute throughout the day. It depends on how warm you are, when you last ate, how much salt you've had in the past day or so, how active you are, your anxiety levels. Lots of factors change that from day to day, which may explain why your symptoms vary from day to day as well. But that also means that we can probably manipulate that gradient with simple medications. So the first step we'll always take for a patient who has symptoms due to left ventricular outflow tract obstruction is to st either start them on new medications or to take away medications that may be making that situation more likely to occur. We'll look at your medications in detail when you're here. Most patients are managed successfully either with no medications at all or with the addition of one or two medications uh, for the rest of their life. However, there is a small subset of patients in whom the medications can't seem to treat the obstruction well enough or in some cases cause side effects that are just as uncomfortable as the original symptoms. For this small number of patients, we do offer procedures, heart surgery or an ablation procedure where we thin down the heart muscle in order to eliminate that obstruction. Each of those procedures has its risks, benefits, and advantages over one another, and we'll talk about those specifically for you. The specific anatomy of your heart often determines which one of the procedures may meet your needs best, and we'll go over those in detail while you're here. I thank you again and look forward to meeting you when you are here, and please remember to write down your questions so that we can answer all of those when you are here with us.